In one of my recent videos, I talked about how to choose between use substitution and integration by parts. And one of the examples I talked about in that video in terms of how to actually pick which integration method to use was how to find the integral of t times sine of 2t dt. So in this video, I wanted to show you how to actually finish that problem, because in that other video, we determined that we would do that using integration by parts. So I wanted to show you how to apply integration by parts to actually integrate that function. And this is actually a clip from one of my recent live streams, which I'm doing every Monday night at 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 o'clock Eastern. So if you find this video helpful, maybe I'll see you there next Monday night. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump on into the problem. Earlier, we talked about this one and we said, based on the fact there isn't anything in this function where if we made that little piece be u, that thing's derivative is not somewhere else in the function. There's no u that we could pick where that thing's derivative would also be somewhere else in the function. So based on that, that tells us u substitution is probably not a great pick. However, since we are given something that is clearly in the form of one function times another function, t times sine of 2t, the integration by parts formula is going to be fairly easy to apply. Um, of course, there's no guarantee that it'll necessarily get you to something easier than what you started with, but you know, there's a good chance that it should, should help. So, you know, if you're trying to make that determination between, especially in a case where you know that you want to use u substitution or integration by parts, if you're trying to make that determination, um, it's clear in this case that integration by parts is much more likely to actually help than u substitution would be. So let's, let me first really quick over here, just write the integration by parts formula. Um, like I mentioned, this is one of the formulas on my integral calculus cheat sheet or my calculus two study guide. Uh, if you want to check that out, go get yourself a copy. There is a link down in the description below where you can go grab that. It is available for instant download. Um, so you can start using it right away. But this is the formula from that study guide. The integral of u times dv can be rewritten as u times v minus the integral of v times du. So when you're applying this formula, really all you want to do to start out with is to first decide what's going to be your u, what's going to be your v, or I'm sorry, not your v, your dv, right? We're starting with u times dv. So we have to basically decide which of these pieces we're going to call u, which of these pieces we're going to call dv. Then we would take the derivative of u to find du. We would take the antiderivative of dv to find v. And then we can apply this formula. So um, I, I do have this written over here. This wasn't necessarily saying that this is what we should call our u and our dv. I was just kind of demonstrating um, options, basically. But let's go ahead and start with what I do have written over here, just to see um, how it's going to work out. Or at least let's kind of think about how it would work out. So generally, when you're doing an integration by parts problem, you want to consider what options you have, just like we did with the u substitution example, where you want to consider what options you could call your u and what options, um, you know, kind of how that'll work out. In this case, or really with integration by parts, there's usually really only going to be two ways you can think about it, unless it's a, a more complex integral that is the product of many things or many pieces. Uh, you may have a couple choices in that case. But in this case, where we just have t as one function, sine of 2t as our other function, there's really only two choices. We can either make u be t and dv be sine of 2t like I have over here, or we could do the other way around, just flip flop them. We could do sine of 2t for u and t for dv. Let's think about how each of those is going to end up working out because really thinking about how they're going to work out, um, just kind of going on to the second step here is going to help you make that choice of which one we want to actually go with. So just like when we were trying to decide between u substitution or integration by parts, how we thought about the first step of each of those to decide which one was going to be better. Same idea here. Let's say that we make this choice for our first step for integration by parts. What is the second step going to look like? And same thing over here. Let's say we make this choice. What is our second step going to look like? And that should help make it easier for us to decide which one we actually want to pick. So thinking about this, the derivative of sine of 2t, we're going to have to use chain rule for that. The derivative of sine of 2t would be uh, 2 times cosine of 2t by the chain rule. And if we were to call dv t, the antiderivative of t would just be done with the power rule, would be 1 half t squared. Okay, now thinking about this over here, if we were to do our second step of figuring out du and v, 
with these designations. So now our u is t, the derivative of t is one. The antiderivative of sine of two t is really not all that different from the derivative of sine of two t. It's just negative two times cosine of two t. This should help kind of give us a clear picture of which option we want to actually go with, because look at what we have in each of these cases. In either case, we have, you know, a u and a dv as t and sine of 2t. So that's pretty much equivalent for all, you know, really any like practical purpose of how that's going to impact our problem. That doesn't really make a difference at this point. Where it makes a difference is what is your du and your v? Because keep in mind, what we're going to have to integrate after applying this formula is v times du. So basically what we're going to have to integrate is the, the product of these two pieces down here that we figured out. Well, looking at these two pieces here, in either case, we have some constant times cosine of 2t, right? Over here, we have 2 times cosine of 2t. Over here, we have negative 2 times cosine of 2t. Those basically are contributing the same thing either way. The question is, what do we have to multiply that by? Well, if we choose this option, what we're multiplying it by is just a constant 1. Multiplying something by a constant never makes it more difficult to find the integral of. It doesn't make it easier either. It makes it exactly the same because a constant can just be pulled out of an integral. So negative two times cosine of two t times one is not going to be any more difficult. Well, in this case, obviously, since it's times one, it's exactly the same as integrating just negative two times cosine of two t, but it's, it's not going to make it any more difficult no matter what this constant was. In this case, though, if we multiply two times cosine of two t times one half t squared, the product of that is going to be much more complex than the product of these two things. So this is probably not our best bet calling u sine of 2t and dvt because having to integrate v times du on our second step is going to be much more complicated than if we make this designation over here. So that tells you that we want to do u equals t and dv equals sine of 2t. So let's go ahead and do that and then um, kind of see where things go from there. And, you know, we already figured out where it goes from there, like immediately afterwards, but where is it going to go after that? So u is going to be t, dv is going to be sine of 2t, du is then going to be 1, and what you do want to do also is uh, you're going to have uh, dt here with your dv, the dt is always going to go with the dv, and then when you take the derivative, you're going to add on du here. So the derivative of u when you take the derivative there, you're going to add on, um, or I'm sorry, not du, that's not right. You would put a dt there. So basically, you're just kind of tacking on a dt onto your dv and your du. It's really just a notational thing. Um, but, you know, technically, if you want to make sure that each step is, you know, mathematically correct, you do want to kind of tack those on there. Um, so then again, our v is now going to be negative 2 cosine of 2t. Okay, so now we can apply this integration by parts formula, which basically is just going to be u times v, so t times all this, so uh, negative 2, just put our constant out front, times that t, and then times cosine of 2t, minus the integral of v times du, so minus the integral of du, which is just 1, or 1 dt, uh, times negative 2 cosine of 2t. So now you can see that this integral here, negative 2 cosine of 2t, is easier to integrate than the integral we started with, t times sine of 2t. Again, the cosine of 2t is really the same difficulty to integrate as the sine of 2t, but now we don't have this other variable tacked in there as well. So what we can do uh, to integrate this, this is already out of the integral. We don't have to worry about taking the antiderivative of this term over here. So we'll just keep our negative 2t cosine of 2t out here. And now we can pull out our negative 2 constant. So our negative sign here, our negative 2 being pulled out is going to turn into a positive 2 times the integral of cosine of 2t dt. Okay, so now all we really have to do is integrate cosine of 2t which we could just think of doing, you know, actually, if you wanted to, what you could do is you could apply u substitution here. You could say u equals 2t, du equals 2, 
and work through that solving all those steps. Uh, I'm not going to show you every step of doing that, but if you wanted to do that, definitely feel free to just kind of do those steps on your own. Um, but what you'll find if you do that is that the integral of this is going to be, so the integral of cosine of 2t is going to be sine of 2t. And then if you kind of want to think of it as chain rule, um, we would then have to, how I like to think of these personally is like, think about going from sine of 2t back to cosine of 2t by taking the derivative. We would have to multiply this by two. So instead we need to divide it by two to kind of cancel that out. Um, but again, if you were to go through the whole process of u substitution, you would find that um, the integral of cosine 2t would be uh, one half sine of 2t. All right, so that is just this integral here. So now keep in mind, we do still have this two being multiplied out here. And then we do still have this negative 2t cosine of 2t out here. And I'm sorry, I just want to double check here real quick. Yes, we're good. Good to continue on. <laughs> um, okay, so now what we can do here is we can actually simplify this a bit. So the, the two and the one half are going to cancel. Um, and that's actually really about all we can do. So we're going to have negative 2t cosine of 2t plus sine of 2t. And there probably is like a trig identity you could use here to simplify this a bit more. Uh, maybe not actually. Um, but this would be now based on integration by parts, the antiderivative of t times sine of 2t. Like I said, integration by parts is actually one of the formulas on my integral calculus cheat sheet or my calculus two study guide. If you want to check that out, there is a link down in the description or the pinned comment below where you can get more information on that and download your copy of that immediately. I think you'll find that study guide very helpful as you work through your integral calculus problems. But if you want to keep learning more about integration by parts or other integration methods, I have made a lot of other videos on those topics. Just go ahead and click on one of those over there and I hope to see you next time. Thanks.